So in the last couple of lectures, we installed PostgreSQL on our local development machine and we also connected our NestJS application to PostgreSQL database. Now, before we proceed further, let's understand repository pattern, which is a design pattern that we are going to use in our NestJS application. So the repository pattern is a design pattern that acts as an intermediate between your business logic and the object relational mapper which you are using. And it provides an abstraction layer for accessing and manipulating data in the database. In our application, the ORM which we are using is type ORM. So when we are using type ORM, the repository pattern provides you all the type ORM features, that is the methods that is available for your database and lets you interact with your database from your service itself. Let's try to understand it. And let's also try to understand how we are going to use type ORM in our NestJS application. And along the way, we are also going to understand few terms like entity and repository. So when you're going to create your NestJS application, in your NestJS application, you're going to create an entity file and you will have a service file. Along with that, you will also have other files like module file and controller, etc. But here we are talking about once we have received the request, and that request has been passed over to the service and the service has to run some business logic. For example, it has to fetch some data from the database or insert some data in the database. So once the controller has passed the request to the service, from there, the service will start its job. And for the service to do its job, in order to contact the database and fetch and write data to the database, service needs a repository because Without repository, the service will not be able to contact the database. And a repository will be created using an entity. So let's first understand what this entity is. An entity is nothing but a class which defines what columns you want to have in a table in your database corresponding to that entity. For example, you create a user entity which is nothing but a user class and in that class, you specify the properties for that class. Now, the type ORM will then create a table with the same name in the database and it will also create columns in that table with the name of the properties. Also, when naming your entity, you should not use plural term. So, for example, if you see, I have named this entity as user.entity.ts but for the repository, it is users repository and for the service, it is users service. So, when you create an entity, you don't use plural term, you use singular term. And the reason behind that is when this entity will be used to create a table in the database, an extra S will be automatically added to this term. So with this entity, a user's table will be created in the database. The name of the table in the database will be users and not user. So if you already specify a plural term here, let's say users, then in the database, the table which will be created, it will have 2s in the end. And you might want to avoid that, right? So when you create an entity, it should use a singular term and not the plural term. So an entity will look something like this. An entity is nothing but a class decorated with at entity decorator. And in that class, you define some properties and you use decorator like at column or at primary generated column to specify that with that property name, a column should be created in the user table in the database. So basically this entity will be used by type ORM to create a table in the database. For this entity, for this user entity, a table called user will be created in the database. And in that table, we will have name column, email column and ID column. So all these three are decorated with column decorator. The first one is decorated with primary generated column. That simply means that this ID field, it is going to be the primary key of that table. And the value of this field will be generated automatically. It will be generated based on the previous value of the ID. So this class here, this entity class, it will be used by type ORM for creating the tables in the database. Then we have repository. Now, once you create an entity file, you will be able to create a repository using that entity file and you will be able to inject it into a service. Now, remember that a repository is not a physical file. 
So you do not need to create a file like user repository. This creation of repository is taken care by type ORM. You just inject the repository in a service where you want to use it. How you can inject a repository? What is the importance of the repository? All these things we are going to learn in our coming lectures. What you need to understand here is that a repository will be created by type ORM using an entity. In this case, a user repository will be created by type ORM using this user entity. And type ORM is also responsible for injecting this repository in this service. And then using that repository, we can contact the database and perform different database operations. So for example, here is our user service class. In this user service class, if you see, we are injecting a repository. First of all, we are creating a user repository of type repository of user. So when we specify repository of user, basically the type ORM is going to use this user entity to create a repository. Okay, so that repository will be created and we are also injecting the repository. So this injection of repository, it is also taken care by type ORM. So type ORM is responsible for creating a repository from an entity and type ORM is also responsible for injecting repository to a service. Once we have the repository, this repository exposes us the methods which we can use in order to operate on a database. For example, let's say you want to find all the users from the users table. For that, you have this find method which you can call on the user repository. And when you call this find method on the user repository, it is going to give you all the users from the user table. In the same way, we also have other methods like save if you want to save something in a table or find one by ID if you want to find something using the ID of the table. So in this way, we have a lot of methods which the repository will expose and which we can use in our service in order to work with database. So I hope now you have a high level overview of what an entity is, how a repository will be created using that entity and how that repository will be used in this service in order to operate on a database. All these things we have learned theoretically, but we are going to use it practically from our next lecture. So in the next lecture, we are going to create our very first entity. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.